on account of the overwhelming popularity when it came to the $7 CPU video, which you can check out in the card above me, I've decided to move on to a graphics card. And in this case, I have found after hunting for hours upon hours an NVIDIA G210. Now this card is not powerful by today's standards or even the standards during the time at which this card was released. It comes equipped with 512 megabytes of GDDR2, not GDDR5, a 64-bit memory interface, and 16, count them, 16 CUDA cores. Yeah. So this card is not powerful now, and it wasn't powerful back then, but can it still run games that existed around the time that this card was released? So I'm talking about games specifically like Counter-Strike, Minecraft, and Crisis, all of which are not very GPU intensive today, but could result in some massive graphics card bottlenecks if the graphics card becomes too weak, which I believe will be the case in this case. So that's it, those are the three games I'm gonna try. I'm also gonna throw some modern AAA titles at the 210 just to, you know, even see if they run. But worst case, we will have three titles from around the time that this card was released to test with, and we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and swap the cards out and see what happens. So what I'll be doing is throwing this 210 into the rig behind me, swapping that out with the card that's currently in there. The CPU is a Xeon 1230V5, which is a four core, eight thread processor, and it is currently overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz using the base clock method. And we're also running two uh, four gigabyte sticks of DDR4, currently clocked to 2133 megahertz. Uh, okay, a bag of mixed results. Let's talk first about CSGO. That card is still hot, actually. CSGO, in all honesty, disappointed me a bit when it came to this card. I expected the graphics card to produce around 30 frames per second consistently, consistently, but that did not happen. Uh, we saw a lot of frame stutters, a lot of skips, pretty much rendered this game unplayable. Uh, especially a game like CSGO, I would not recommend this card for the simple reason that other people are running this game at like 144 hertz and above, and they're seeing all those frames. They're seeing 144 frames and up. And in a game like this, where things are very intense and you're moving around a lot, those frames do count. If you don't believe me, check out the video above me. Another game that surprised me, but for a very good reason, was GTA V. I expected this game to just not open up altogether. Uh, games like Dirt Rally didn't, Tomb Raider didn't, uh, a few others didn't that I did try. But uh, GTA V was the only one that worked, and that was that was phenomenal. Uh, it might be that GTA V has DirectX 10 support, where these other games don't. I couldn't open up Black Ops 3 because the game is built on DirectX 11, and this card doesn't support DirectX 11, so kind of SOL there. But back to GTA 5, I was actually able to run the built-in benchmark, which was something I wasn't able to do on the $7 CPU build, but I had to keep everything literally turned down all the way, and I had to run the game at a resolution of 800 by 600, hence the very small window there. Another thing I should mention is the fact that GTA 5 has a minimum VRAM requirement that exceeds what is offered by the 210. The game required about 800 megabytes of VRAM, but this card of course only offers 512 megabytes of it, which I believe cut into our frame rates more than what we would have seen had we had sufficient amounts of VRAM around one gig or so. 
As for Minecraft, well, uh, a subpar, I think, is the word that best describes the experience. We were hovering around 18 FPS the whole time. Needless to say, I wouldn't recommend this graphics card, even for a game like that. One thing that was cool and noteworthy, however, was the fact that when I conducted the TNT detonation test with just a single block of TNT and then 27 blocks stacked against each other, uh, the detonations of those TNT blocks really did not result in a severe frame rate dip, and I, that, I believe, is because of the fact that the CPU was pulling a lot of the weight in that case. So those kinds of explosions in Minecraft do take a toll on the CPU, and I've proven that in the video in the card above me. But it was cool to see the CPU actually stepping in and kind of taking things over during those specific scenarios in the game. Lastly, Crisis. Can it run Crisis? That answer is no. The game would open up and I was able to kind of move around a little bit, but I quickly ended the experience because it really wasn't all that great of an experience. And when you compare Crisis to something like CSGO, Crisis is more intensive, but I didn't think it was that much more intensive. Just goes to show you why that question has so much meaning even today. Can it run Crisis? That answer is again, no. Do I recommend this card? The short answer is no. The long answer is no, not under any circumstance. And let me tell you why. If you wanted to purchase a card right now with a similar form factor and price that's also much more powerful, you could purchase, for example, the GT710. Now this card isn't going to allow you to play GTA 5 at 1080p maxed out settings at 60 FPS, but what it will do is allow you to play some of those older games without many hitches whatsoever. You will be able to surf the web, watch YouTube videos in 1080p 60 FPS, no problem. That card I do recommend if that's all you plan to do with your PC, but this card right here I do not recommend. At all, goodbye. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you thought the content was cool and unique. Give it a thumbs down if you hate everything about life. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already and stay tuned for more tech related content here on the channel and just more sciencey stuff in general to kind of bolster our name a bit. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.